Hi, everybody. How are you all doing today? This is going to be considered Wellness Wednesday. Um, that's why I have the music, because I'm going to be fairly serious pretty much the whole video today. I'm sure by now some of you who've watched my videos can tell I'm a passionate person about certain things. And one of the things I'm extremely pa passionate about is your mental health, your wellness, you know, how you take care of yourself because it all ties together. You know, if you're emotionally messed up, then your physical and your mental are not going to be okay. If you're mentally messed up, you're emotional and you're physical. If you're physically messed up, the other two are not going to be, you know, all right. So you have to take care of all of it. I am commenting and putting my own spin on our friend's um, video about depression. I'm not even going to show it today because I don't encourage nor um, advertise not getting healthy. I'm never going to do that. I know some of you all know that I'm a counselor by trade. But also, I'm a woman who's gone through life up to 61 years. I've had my own emotional, physical, and mental issues to deal with. As far as I know, when I gave my life to Christ, it didn't make me perfect. But it did say that I was a new creature, meaning I can be a new creature in Christ if I choose to be. Now, whatever I carried over with me when I gave my life to Christ was my choice. Because if I really believe the word, like we say we do, then anything that was already messed up and jacked up should have been left on the other side. But I know that's not how we are as human beings, and I know God knew that too. So even though he told us that, he knew we weren't going to do it. But what I do know is that the things that really bothered me, sorry y'all, and had me messed up, I took them and put them on the altar because that was my purpose of giving my life to Christ is so that I could get rid of some of the crap that I was dealing with. And I laid it down there sincerely. And it's not like you just know that it's gone. But as time goes on, you know that it's gone. And to me, that is a testimony. You have the test. And then once you have been successful, you got the money. So you got the testimony. A testimony is not where I'm still in the mist and I haven't received my success in whatever area it may be. I'm not going to be a follower of Christ and be pitiful at the same time when I can pray and be powerful. It makes no sense for me to say I believe the word, but I'm not going to use the word in any situation that comes up in my life. And when it comes to mental health, I knew that everybody's faith is not where somebody else's is. Everybody's belief system is not the same. And so I saw that there were people that was in the church striving hard to want to do better, but there were things that were holding them back. And so I knew that we needed to connect the Christian and as we say, the, the worldly, the world systems together, meaning that you're, you're, you're believing you have faith, but it hadn't got you to the point where you're successful. So how about we throw some of the stuff that's in the world that's good that can help you get there? Which means, to me, talk therapy. Now, I know a lot of people don't believe in talk therapy. And I wasn't raised on it. There are certain cultures who never talk about it. We are getting better. And I can guarantee you, if you're 55 and older, you, you, you definitely didn't hear about it in your homes. Because... Most families couldn't afford to send themselves or their children to a therapist. 
and the ones who could wouldn't tell nobody because it was taboo. And in some states, in some areas, in some cultures, in some families, it is still taboo to say that you're going to get mental health because they consider you crazy. You know what I think crazy is? To have a mental issue and not get the help. Talk therapy is nothing, but just like you come on YouTube and you listen to us or whoever you're listening to, it is you going, sitting with someone else who is unbiased. They don't have a dog in the fight. They don't know you. So they're just going to listen to you say any and everything that you want. Can you imagine being able to go and tell somebody your deepest, darkest secrets, things that you have never told anybody else, things that are bothering you, things that are upsetting you, things that make you frustrated, things that you just hate, and they're not going to sit there and judge you? That's what talk therapy is. Now, if you're going and you don't have a person that's allowing you to do that, then you need to pack up your grip and find somebody who will. Because counselors, therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, the job is not to tell you how to live your life, but to listen to you and help show you different ways that you can, or different avenues or different, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I can't think of it now, but things to do to help get your life on track to go into where you want to. It's holding your hand and helping you walk through this time. My job is not to tell you what to do. My job is to support you as you're walking through. And we're going to sit and discuss some things that can help you get over whatever you're dealing with. Or at least get you to a healthier place. I cannot tell you that if you had horrendous trauma, if you were sexually abused or molested, or all the things that we can think of that's just horrible... I cannot sit here and tell you that you will never, ever think about that stuff again. Out. I can't tell you that because I would be lying. What I can tell you is that we can work together and find a way for you to deal with it at your pace and then be able to put it to a place that even when it comes up, you have tools that you can use that help you deal with those thoughts or something that reminds you of it or whatever the case may be. Our memory is something. A lot of times the things we don't want to remember will come up and the things we want to stay left behind somewhere. And I can say that because there's a lot of days I'm on here and y'all hear me say, I can't think of that word. But what I can say is that you can get to a healthier state. I'm never going to tell somebody that you have to stay the way you are. If you were hurt as a child, don't still be an adult and still be that hurt child. Don't you want better? See, to me, sitting someplace and crying... And repeating the same story over and over and over again about your trauma is not healing because I don't see any success in that. And I don't see it helping anybody else. All I see is that it makes other people feel bad. And if they're at a place where they haven't dealt with their trauma, they're going to join in with yours. But nowhere in that conversation are you telling them how they can do better. Are you telling them that you've been successful and these are the things you did? that you don't have to sit and cry about certain things anymore because you've conquered that area. I could sit here and tell you about my background and there would be lots of people that can understand different parts of it and touch and agree with me on different parts of it. And a lot of people would be crying. But it was more important for me to have a story that when it ends, that he can say, these things might have happened, but this is how she ended up. It is sad to me to see that there are tools out here that we can use to get to a better state mentally. And either people don't know about it, 
People tell you don't do it. People reinforce you staying where you're at versus growing. That's one thing I can say. Don't ever let somebody else keep you in that place that's unhealthy for you. I couldn't give a rip who didn't believe in me going to talk to somebody. They have free clinics. They have um, ones that will go on a sliding scale. And of course you have the ones that are more upscale. If it's addiction that got you to that point, there are places for you to go get detox and for you to be able to do in and outpatient therapy. And if you just don't have any avenue for any of those places to go, or you just not at that place yet, look on my community page and I put my email there. You send me an email saying, Deborah, I need someone to talk to. And I'm going to contact you and we're going to talk. I have been with, I have, you know, talked to people, listened to people pretty much for free, for $20, for $25, for $75, for $150 an hour. My thing is this, God did not put these skills inside me for me to say, hey, if you don't have any money, then I'm not going to listen to you. That's not the deal. The deal is that because he gave me the skills, allowed me to go to school, to get the education that I needed, that when I got finished, I would help his people for no money or a whole lot of money and everything in between. So it's not about the money for me. And I've told every place I've worked at that it's not about the money, but the problem was they were about the money. That's why I wanted to do my own thing. That's why I have mentioned to you all about having Zoom sessions, but I don't know, I'm thinking I might do it um, on members, where we get together and it's a smaller group and it's only people that want to be there so that we can have like group sessions and talk about these things. Because I know there are hurting people out there. I know there are people that just need somebody to encourage them, to help them get through that minute, that hour, that day. And they may not have anybody. There may be nobody in their life that's willing to listen to them or they're going to say they're tired of listening to them or they don't have the time or suck it up and just get over it. Yeah, I understand all that. That's why I'm extending my help to you. And if I can help you get into a place that's in your city, your state, I will definitely do that. And if you go and they suggest that you get on medication, there ain't no shame in that because sometimes these things can be um, hormonal, especially if you're an older woman going through menopause. It could be um, something from, you know, might have been hereditary in your family for everybody to deal with depression or just sadness or things like that. Or you grew up in it and that's all you know how to do emotionally. Or you're so angry because that's all you know, that's all you've seen was people handle their unhappiness and their failures and their frustrations by yelling, screaming, and fighting. There are a lot of things that we've picked up in life that were not healthy for us. There was a lot of things that was poured into us as children that was not right. It just wasn't the right way of dealing with things. But what I can tell you is that you can get better. Will you be 100%? Some, no. Some, maybe. It depends on what you want. How hard are you willing to work? And what is it that you want to get out of it? But what I do know is that we were not designed to be that way. That's not how God created us. And if you truly want to change, you can do that. But please don't sit and sit in a, in a place where all you do is cry and continually go over your trauma over and over again and not try to do anything different. You know that thing about if you do the same thing over and over again, that's what you're going to get? You've got to make some changes, and that may be the hardest part. The hardest part may be picking up your phone and Googling where there's a free mental health clinic. The hardest part may be making that phone call and making that appointment. 
The hardest part may be getting dressed that day and making that and getting to that appointment. The hardest part may be walking across that threshold hole and sitting down in front of somebody. But if you get that far and you're sitting there, then be honest. Will you walk out of there and be cured? <laughs> the odds are no. But you just might walk out of there feeling a little bit better and feeling good about the fact that you've taken this into your hands and you're willing to do something about it. You can't get help if people don't know you need help. And when people are extending the olive branch to try to help you, they can only do so much because nobody can make you do anything that you don't want to do at all. And I'm definitely not trying to do that. What I'm trying to do is encourage you that if this is you, step out of your comfort zone. Try something different this year. And it doesn't have to be anything major. It could be that you're just having some struggles in your life right now. You may hate your job and you want to change, but you're fearful in taking that step. It may be that you're a housewife or a stay-at-home mom, or you're a single parent, and you're just having a hard time dealing with your children and you at the same time. Talk therapy is for any and everything. It doesn't have to be some serious mental health issue. It can just be that you need a soft spot to land and be able to share with somebody how you're feeling. So I say to you today, don't ever let somebody else's trauma be your trauma. Don't ever feel like because they hadn't gotten help and they don't want to do no better that you don't have to. You don't have to be stuck nowhere at all. So again, I say to you, reach out. You'll be surprised sometimes how many hands will come back to you to help try to pull you up. Again, I extend my email on my community wall if you need someone to talk to and you just hadn't gotten to the place that you're ready to leave the house or make the phone call or whatever the case may be. Try me out and see. You never know. You just never know. I know this video is not like my normal ones and I know it's a little... Um, I guess you, it's not as upbeat, but I am serious, and I hope everybody else is serious, because we're not an island by ourselves, so we are all in some form of a family unit, and if our family's not healthy, then that reflects on us, meaning that if you came from an unhealthy family, the odds are it rubbed off on you. If you're now an adult and you're in your own family and it's an unhealthy family because you're not healthy and you're afraid that your issues from childhood are going to rub off on your children, then do the best thing you can do as a parent is get your help. If you're a person that have been walking around for years and years knowing that you've lost jobs because you just couldn't make it to work. You've lost relationships because you just couldn't be the best partner that you knew that you could be. Do something about those things. You know, as far as I know, we only get to go around one time in this body that's here right now. And I know for me, I would hate it to be here all this time and the whole time I suffered. The whole time I suffered and I couldn't enjoy the life that was put before me, that was given to me because I was suffering with mental, emotional, and physical issues. All I can do is extend my hand I hope someone will at least shake it back.
I hope everybody is having a good Wednesday for those who may not need this. Maybe you know someone who needs it. Maybe you have a friend or a family member who's dealing with some things. And you may be tired of them dealing with the things. You may be tired of hearing their story. But maybe today you can show a little compassion and maybe you can look for the places in your city and maybe just text it to them and say, you know, this is just something I thought maybe you might want to, you could use. If you can't, then just, you know, delete the text. There's a lot of hurting people out here. Sometimes I'm wondering if it's more hurting than it is ones who are not. All right, guys. I don't know if I'll be back today, but I, I just felt the need to say this. I really did. Um, take care. Take care of your emotional side. Take care of your physical side. And definitely take care of your mental health side. Bye, guys.